My name is Reverend Denise Walden Glenn. I am 42 years old and I live in Buffalo, New York. I am blessed to have 13 children total, ranging from 26 years old to 13 years old. Part of what drew me to Buffalo is I have a son who is uniquely abled and um, he gets the best health care here. There's a lot of rich culture and history in Buffalo, um, but also there's a lot of ministry work here in Buffalo and the ability to really dig deep in community and create change um, and empower the community here. And I love that. Breaking news out of Buffalo, New York, where authorities say at least 10 people are dead after a mass shooting at a supermarket. I looked at my phone and saw my husband's photo. Um, so I answered the phone and he told me, he said, something terrible is happening and a lot of people trying to call you. And I saw I had missed, I don't know, several calls. And so I called her and she said, you need to get to Tops right now. There's a shooting happening out there. May 14th brought up a lot of questions for my children. Um, I think it brought up a lot of questions for a lot of us. Uh, right after it happened, in all honesty, I didn't know how to answer any of the questions. My kids wanted to know why. They wanted to understand how somebody so young could have so much hate. I think in the beginning, I didn't recognize how much so. Um, but I found myself like any sudden movement, any out of the ordinary noises. I was flinching. I was just kind of jumpy. I'm definitely on edge. I'm definitely more aware of my surroundings and watching who's around me when I'm in spaces like stores or community spaces. Um, my family and I have safety plans all the time. Um, we've gotten very good at looking for all the exits when we're in places. Like this has now become our norm. But my son said to me about two weeks after the shooting, he was like, mom, we can't leave now. Like our community needs us here. Um, I've been working very closely with the families that were closest to the pain of this tragedy. Um, and I have given them my word that I will walk through this process with them. Returning to church was difficult. My very first uh, time going back to church after the shooting, um, I went in and um, I was sitting in the back of the church and I saw the ushers bringing and a white gentleman that I had never, like he's never been to our church before. And I remember I couldn't focus on service. So I can't tell you what was preached about that day. All I could do was watch this person. Even once I knew security knew they were there is watch them. And I was terrified for myself, my own kids. And it just, it made me feel very helpless. But my faith is what grounds me. Um, my faith is what keeps me. Um, I will be honest, I definitely struggled um, during the immediate time after May 14th, because like I said, it's hard to understand. It's hard to understand seeing that level of hate and violence show up. But because I have seen incredible things um, that God has done in my life and in the life of so many other people. And also it's given me the strength to really love on and support others. Mental health and wellness is something that I'm very passionate about. It means a lot to me. Um, I am a practitioner and a trainer of restorative practices. Um, and so that was something that very soon after the shooting, we were very aware, like we needed to have that in place. So yes, my family, um, is receiving mental health services and not just necessarily uh, what we see as traditional therapy, but a lot of non-traditional mental health services um, like art therapy, music therapy, movement therapy, um, and things that, yes, it helps us learn to deal with our anxiety, our breathing, but um, also just gives us joy my kids come alongside me in this work and not just because it's mom work mom's work but because they believe in it and so my hopes and dreams for my children is i just want them to 
be able to be everything that they were divinely created to be. I want them to know that they have the ability to thrive. These are things I want for my children, but these are things that I want for all children, not just my children. It's okay, right? Like it's okay to struggle. It's okay to have the emotions that you have, but I also would want folks to not go through that alone. Reach out, put community around yourself, and find things like how I've found that putting up positivity all around me is helpful for me. Try things to find out what is helpful to you. Um, what, what makes you smile, right? Whatever that is. And then how do you make that part of your norm? And there's nothing wrong with needing help and needing community and needing support. We as human beings were created that way we are taught to be strong and resilient and that we should have it within our own know with all to get through everything but that is a myth that is not true we have to walk in our own liberation our own freedom which starts in our mind and in our heart and realizing that we have the ability to be part of creating what we want to see in our communities and our lives and i'm honored to walk in it every day